My first guest tonight, of course, is the anchor of NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. He's also author of the best-selling books, The Greatest Generation, and this one right here, The Greatest Generation Speaks. Please welcome our good friend, Tom Brokaw. <laughs> So how are you? I'm well, thank you very much. Ah, good, yes. I'm going to behave a little better now that you're on the show. You've elevated the we'll, level of the show. We'll be, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, I have a quick question for you on a personal note. Uh, I, uh, I, I, you had a little home in Connecticut I did. not long ago. Right. For years and years, Tom Brokaw lives in Connecticut, nice part of the, of, the, of the state. I finally go and I buy a house in the neighborhood and I see you like in the general store and go, hey, Tom, how are you? And you were like, hello. Weeks later, you moved away. Well, I am. Uh, true story. It's absolutely true. I had, I had a sense of what was gonna happen to real estate values. I thought they were little buying in, everyone's coming. I'm out of here as quickly as I can get out of here. I, have a, I was like, Tom, too. how are you? It's me, Conan, from Late Night. And you didn't stay long. There goes the neighborhood, everyone. <laughs> Didn't say it's a great part of Connecticut. It's a wonderful part. You left in the middle of the night. <laughs> I did. Went home, told the wife, "Pack up, let's get out of here." Well, there was that and the overdue plumber's bill. I mean, those two <laughs> things we had. To, we had. You to leave. just had to go. No, we kept some property up there. We still have a great affection for it. We were there for 25 years altogether. Very and nice. One of our daughters was married there, and uh, you know, I fished in the Housatonic River, and I still have a great affection for it. Right. Well, it's a, be a beautiful area. It I is. don't fish, but I look at that river often. <laughs> And I throw TVs in there sometimes. <laughs> Off the bridge, it's just fun for me. Uh, you know, I mentioned in the monologue, I mentioned uh, Senator Strom Thurmond is in the news because he's... 28-year-old son, about to become the U.S. attorney in South Carolina. That's right. This is, this is big news. He's a fascinating guy to me because he's 98. And it's mind-boggling to me. The other day they opened a time capsule that was 100 years old. And they're talking about, this is amazing, it hasn't been opened in 100 years. Strom Thurmond, who is an active member of the Senate is 98 years old. What's he like? Have you met him? Oh, I've met him on a number of occasions, actually, and he is, for a man of that age, about as vital as you can expect him to be. A couple of years ago, I was at a meeting in Senator Dole's office of the Republican senators around the time of the State of the Union address, and about halfway through the meeting, uh, the door opens and in totters, and that's the only way to describe him. Uh, he, totters. he totters? He totters. Does he move like this? I mean, come, side you know, to he side? Just kind of, he kind of comes lurching into the room and and Bob Dole says, well, there's old Strom, and Strom sits down. <laughs> Must be and... nice for Bob Dole to get to call someone old right. something. And he says, and he says Strom, here comes that old guy. He said, Strom, is there anything you want to say to right. the group? And there were a group of reporters, or Dan and Peter and I were all there, and, and we look at Strom thinking, well, this is unfair to put this 96-year-old man at the time on the spot like that. Right. Strom stands unsteadily to his feet, and he says, yeah, one of my constituents just won the lottery for $200 million called home and told her husband, honey, I won the lottery, pack your things. And he said, shall I pack winter things or summer things? Where are we going? She said, pack them all. You're out of there. <laughs> and he sat down. <laughs> so, yeah, another friend good. of mine, a woman who is a columnist, who shall go nameless for the purpose of the story, went up to interview him last year at one point. And uh, he met her down on the ground floor. They rode up in the elevator. They had this long interview. The next day, his staff called her and said, could you come back about once a week? He hasn't been this lively in about 20 months, so <laughs> good luck you come back. He was very happy. He, still, he likes the ladies still. He still loves the ladies. He gave Hillary a big hug on the Senate floor as soon as she was sworn in. He stood up and, and then, said, can I give you a hug? And then fell asleep mid-hug. <laughs> Someone uh, get this guy off me. He was, in fact, during World War II, he landed on D-Day. He was a major already at that time because he was one of the older veterans. So he's had a remarkable life. He ran for president in 1948. He was the epitome of segregation in America for a long time. And he still is obviously a very conservative man, but he has this kind of beloved quality. Right. In the I just think when anyone gets to that point, 98, 98 I don't amazing. care... You know what I mean? They can, they can be throwing eggs at my house or dunking my cats in paint. And I'm like, you're 98, do what you want. You and when he, was, when he was 70, he married Miss South Carolina, who at the time was about 22. Yes, he's my hero. <laughs> Maybe you can get him to buy my house in Connecticut. And then you can, you can live <laughs> yeah. next door to each other. Yeah, he'll live there 40 years. <laughs> uh, 
uh, he'll move away when he knows I'm there. They all do. You know, we had a good friend of yours on recently. I don't, I don't want to name drop on your behalf, but you're good friends with Tom, Tom Hanks. I am. And you guys are good pals. And uh, he has this massive hit now, this movie Castaway. Castaway. Did you enjoy the film? Did you see I it? Went to, uh, yeah, I did go to see it. I remember when he first started making, he was talking to the people from FedEx. And I thought, what is the connection there? What can it obviously be? So then when I realized what the storyline was, I, I like to do out-of-door things, and especially wilderness things, in which you test yourself a little bit. So I wanted to have the, see what the vicarious experience would be like to be isolated on an island. How would you cope with it? That kind of thing. Um, I brought a little too much detail to it in my own mind. There were a couple of things he could have done to start that fire without the, the going Tom to the Tom Hanks character? Yeah, without going to the trouble that he did. What did he rub sticks together? He rubbed a stick together. That's in the trailer, so we're not giving away anything here. And... Um, and it, he, it's absolutely a timeless performance on his part. I mean, it's really a great performance. Mm -hmm. There he is playing off against a soccer ball is all. Right. And it's so authentic. But he had a flashlight. And if you take the two positive ends of a flashlight and put them together, they generate enough heat to start a fire. Uh, that's if you put them together yeah. and, and hold right. it up to and some... You, and do it in, over a little brush or something like that, that'll start a fire. That's one of the things that you know. The other thing is the, the pair of, you know, there was a FedEx box that washed up on shore and it had a pair of ice skates in it with stainless steel blades. You could, with that sun in the South Pacific, have a little reflection off the stainless steel blades. It would be like having a magnifying glass. You could start a fire anywhere with that. Also with a crystal from a watch, you can do that. Kind of thing. <laughs> Ladies and right. gentlemen, I MacGyver. By the way. You know what? I do love that stuff. Whenever I'm doing that, the tree is being removed, you know, and I'll be there in place of the tree at Rockefeller Center <laughs> with two batteries being held together. What I love is I do love those little facts because I, I don't know any of them. And I, when I watched that movie, uh, Castaway, I knew that if I was on the island, the, I'd be trying to eat the skate. For like, <laughs> right, right. I'd be like chewing on, I'd be doing everything wrong. Well, I actually got caught in a situation one time in which I was isolated for... 24 hours under pretty difficult circumstances in a bad river trip in which somebody was killed, in fact. And you went on a river trip yeah, and... And somebody was killed and we got thrown and we were washed up and we, they couldn't get to us because we're in a deep canyon, only in sneakers and uh, shorts. And they made a drop from uh, an airplane, which I managed to get up on this cliff and retrieve. And, and the geniuses who dropped it dropped a sleeping bag, uh, can of something with no can opener and no matches, which is what we needed most of all. And a TV guide. And a TV guide, <laughs> right. Yeah. And the matches came floating down the stream from our overturned raft. We got them, and, and somebody did get them uh, dried out. And I had forgotten at that time, which is what happens to you, the way you dry out matches if they're very wet, for example, is run them through your hair because the static electricity in your hair will dry out almost anything very quickly if your hair is dry enough. So... So there are bald, no bald, bald people should never go river rafting. <laughs> Martha, one thing we've learned. Martha Stewart has nothing on this program here. I have a whole new... I, I didn't know any of this. I've known you for a while. We're, well, some would say, best friends. And, uh... <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Why did you laugh at that? And I had no idea. I now have this whole different... I mean, I see you doing the news every night, and, and now I just see you bare-chested running through the <laughs> woods, beating a cheetah and eating its tail. It's right. just... Just a, just a loincloth and, and, uh, and a rather large overhang, actually. You should start at every night now. You should... <laughs> wow. You saw me. You saw me try to elevate the level of the show. And this man brings us down into the muck. You sicken me. Uh, NBC Nightly News, of course, with Tom Brokaw is on weeknights at 6.30. And I can't congratulate you enough. You've got two books. They've been on the bestseller list forever, and uh, you deserve it. Great That's job. Amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, thanks for so coming by. Always Happy nice to have you. Tom Brokaw, everyone. Elisa Donovan coming up. We'll be right back.